Hello? Yeah, yeah, I'm still... Are you here? I'm here. Okay, the, the recording started. Perfect. Okay, I'm here with Ad Moore, one of my favorite people on Twitter. How are you? I'm pretty good, man. How are you? I'm doing fine. Uh, it's just morning here in Thailand, and I have coffee, so I'm, uh, I'm very happy. How are oh, you? Okay, that, that's why you said good morning. I was wondering where you must have been. That, that's cool, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm a... Uh, yeah, so uh, different time zones. The ultimate proof that Earth is not flat. Well, that's what I hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have a pretty uh, interesting story. You kind of started out as like, I hate to use the word zero, but you have a period in your life where you're basically like wasting life, if I can say it like that. Like, yeah, I think I think that's a fair way to put it. I, I certainly, you know, I don't I don't have any problems discussing, you know, where I was and and how it was for me, and and I look at that period in my life as as kind of the that was the point where I was like, okay, you know, I have to make changes. So if, if things weren't bad, like there's nothing wrong, I think, with with life uh, getting bad, you know, or rather. Yeah. You know, because every no one's life is going to be perfect the entire time, uh, and and certainly as you're getting older, you're going to have these pitfalls you stumble into. The the difference between I think a uh, mediocre life and one that's going to turn out to be somewhat excellent, if not extremely excellent, you know, is what do you what do you do? Do you continue down that path, knowing how knowing that it's got a negative slope, that there's no way to really or uh, recover, pull yourself back, you know, you're just going to be uh, slowly getting worse, or do you take a hard turn and start pulling yourself out the gutter? And that's what I, I did. I mean, I, I took a dramatic number of steps, you know, they certainly seemed dramatic to the people around me at the time, but but I knew that, you know, I, I remember, like, when I when I really started making changes, and maybe we, we go into that more, but I remember thinking to myself, you know, five years is going to pass anyway, am I going to, uh, is it going to pass and I'm going to have more options, or is it going to pass and I'm going to have fewer options, and, and I said, you know, I, I cannot you know, five years can't go by and, and I'm in the same position where I'm worried about food or getting a place to rent or getting a place to live. You know, I don't, I don't want to be in that position anymore. But, um, did you change, did you change your life because you had to, because of when, when I look back at my journey, so when I, when I was in high school, if you would ask all the people, like who would be the most successful after high school, nobody would have picked me. But right now, here I am. And it's like, when they asked me, how, why did you change so much? Like, what happened? And I was like, I was at a place where I had to. Like, I was suicidal. It was basically do something or kill myself, you know? Yeah. It's like, were you, were you at that point as well? Or could you like... No, 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 no. I, you know, I've, I've, I've never been a suicidal thing. Well, I, I had a, a, a brief moment in my life where I was like, oh, this is horrible. And, you know, maybe I thought about doing something nuts like that. But uh, no, my my biggest issue is you know I'm I, I think that I have I have I'm vain I, I have vanity and and I didn't like the options I had I felt like I was better I didn't like the way I felt you know when I looked in the mirror I didn't like the options in my life I didn't like the amount of money I had or the options I had to make more money uh, I I didn't feel like a lot of people respected me and I brought that on myself with a lot of the ways I behaved under uh, the influence of alcohol. Um, and, and I, I didn't feel like I was going anywhere. So I, I wanted to be somebody like, I didn't want to be, um, a guy whose, whose glory was, you know, drinking and partying in his, in his twenties, you know, I, I needed to be something more. I wanted to be something more. I mean, it was, it was, it was kind of, I didn't really have a choice, uh, in the matter. Uh, <laughs> I think about it like that. I mean, I guess, I guess I had a choice, right? Like I, I could have decided, you know, what, what did I do? Like, uh, I didn't have any job prospects. I remember that was really painful. I, I could only work customer service. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to go back to school and I want to figure this out. But I didn't have money for school, so I, I figured that out. I said, you know, I got to join the military. So I joined the military so I can get money for school. And then I started in school and I said, okay, what's worth studying? And everything had math in it. I was terrified of math. But I said, you know what? I'm going to make sure I understand this. I'm going to put the work in 
to, to really get it and grasp it. And I did. And I, I graduated uh, with, a, with a physics degree and a mathematics minor. So I got, and, you know, and I don't, I don't use it actively, but mm-hmm. it set the, it set the tone for everything else. You know, I, I really could have done a lot of other things about my life, but now I can do those things, you know, before uh, I was, I was relegated to a few set paths, you know, I, I was boxing professionally, but I didn't know how that was going to turn out, you know, uh, and because most boxers don't make any money. I, I'm, I made a little money and I still didn't make that much money. Um, and, and most boxers don't make uh, close to what I make me. So I, I knew that it was going to come to an end one day. And I wanted to make sure I have more options because, you know, you, you can you can say I'm boxing. That's why everything else is on hold as long as you want. Mm-hmm. But then there comes a point where, like, you know, like I'm, I'm very aware of how uh, or rather I take personal responsibility. Uh, very. Uh, it's a big deal to me. And for me to, <laughs> to to let myself just continue to descend, I said, OK, this is this has got to stop. I have to I have to have a disciplined, controlled approach uh, to pull myself out the gutter and to be more than I was at that time. Mm. Yeah, it makes sense. But also, like, when you... I, I fight, too. Uh, now, right now, I'm fighting Muay Thai here in Thailand. And it's like, okay. I just, like, because I go from... I had two training camps in a row, and it's like, everything else is, is suffering. It's, well, I wouldn't say suffering. It's like a choice, but still, like, I, I'm not that productive. Oh, yeah. Like... like... <laughs> You can't do anything. People don't understand this. You know, I get I get messages all the time. Why'd you stop fighting? Why'd you stop fighting? You only have one loss. You only have one loss. Like you have to understand the the business ethics of the sport, or not ethics, the business practices of the sport. Uh, yeah, I can I can you know with a loss now I'm worth more, which is weird. Um, yeah. But, but I, I'm not gonna just go in there and take an ass kick, and I want to make sure I can train and and advance well the thing is uh i i also have this future vision i mean whether whether that's a, a benefit or a curse i know or i knew that okay if i took the time off the train uh that i wouldn't be able to uh work on the other parts of my life uh my schooling my website <laughs> my, my writing all of that and that was important to me and it's still, and that was very important. I mean, now that's how I make, you know, all of my money is, is through my, my writing and marketing and stuff. So, so it took a little while, but, but yeah, uh, people that they, they don't, they do not get how much energy and time it takes to train for fighting. And, and I'm, I'm surprised at how far I got, uh, pulling it wearing so many different hats i mean there was a period of time roughly uh the end of uh i will say like september 2015 to uh may 2016 where i was i was in the military boxing professionally doing school physics work at that not like slouch work but physics work uh right for my website uh, it was it was a, a really hard time, and even looking back, I have no idea how I how I managed to make it through it all. But I did, and my life is better. But but that's the thing, right? You hear all that, and that was the result of a deliberate action. You know, that was 2015, 2016. To put that in perspective, you know, just four years ago, 2011, 2012. You know, I'm I'm, I'm just drinking all the time. I'm going to train. Because training is important, but I'm I'm not really making any progress, not finishing any projects, and yeah. and this really turned into a thing that worked out really well for me. And and I'm but but it's only because I started making moves. I didn't know exactly where the end was going to be. I just knew where I couldn't be anymore. Okay. So when you say you know where you couldn't be anymore, you mean that you that's when you quit boxing? No, no, no. I I didn't stop boxing until. Oh, uh, you know, until like I was training for a fight and I got hurt, and then I decided uh, afterwards that the things were going really well. But I didn't stop boxing mm-hmm. in 2018. Uh, I'm I'm speaking of the the times where I was doing all of that stuff, uh, and and I felt like I had to do it. I didn't I didn't know what my life was going to be. I just knew uh, it could no longer be what it was. And and now I mean I'm I'm so happy. But my like, like, there's this whole thing going on right now, 
with the um with the COVID nineteen and yeah. people who can't work and can't do anything. And and I'm like, okay, you're like like I know that things are bad, but I look at uh, what I have and what I'm capable of doing, and and, I, and I'm not. I'm, I'm moving into a new apartment. Um, <laughs> just not worried. And a lot of it is because I, you know, I, I had done this all this work and built this platform, and made myself um, valuable. I had increased my values so much that uh, I'm, I'm not I'm not too worried. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, but, but that, but that comes from, but that, but, that, but, but interestingly enough, that comes from making sure that I, I wouldn't be that guy in that situation prior to, and now, you know, it's, it's a great situation. Yeah, I agree on that. It's funny because like, uh, I'm in Thailand and there are interviewing people for, uh, for a gym. Like what they basically want to hear is how they struggle. That's what they want to hear. And people are like, oh, you should interview Alex. And I was like, I can do that. But they're never going to do that because I'm just optimistic. Like when they ask me how are things going, I'm like, this is amazing. As soon as they shut down the gym, I was like, well, I'm going to just focus on other stuff. And my life is improving like drastically. Yeah. But yes, it's like, but then you have like, it's like it's hard because like, then you have these people and before COVID-19, they were like, I hate my job. And then now COVID-19 breaks out and like they lose their job and they're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, what, what, what do you want? And it's like, I, I try to explain to people, like, if you don't change your life right now, you're wasting so much time because now is the time where you don't have like a job, no parties, you have no distractions. Like, yeah, you can use the situation and, and, I, and I'm very curious to just. You know, I wonder, I guess, how many people are are using it to move ahead and how many people are freaking out. Because, you know, these are the force majeure events, as they say. These are the things that can happen. And there's nothing you can do about them. You, you just, you know, everyone is suffering. The, 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 the water level has been lowered for everyone. And the people who... Who were in shallow waters, you know, they, they hit the rocks, man. They can't move. And if you had been... Working diligently, you know, having some money saved or whatever, or you're you're going to be in good shape. So it really just depends on on what you do when times are good. You know, when times are good, people tend to 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 slack off and they think it's going to last forever, and they don't prepare for the hardships uh, that are coming. And then hardships are always going to be coming, but. Are you gonna Are you gonna make sure you're ready, or are you gonna go? Oh shit, no money saved. What am I gonna do? You know, I, I, that's what is really scary. Is that most Americans live that way, and I think that's why people are really freaking out. Is as I think, I think the average American probably has uh, a month of stuff saved. Like, but after that, what are they gonna do? And and you know we we could get into like why they have it or not have it saved and you know that that's a different discussion, but but even if you had you know if you had cut if you if a person cut back all the bad habits, and they were only spending their money on on, on what was necessary and and building up a little bit of cushion, uh, maybe these times aren't going to be as horrible. But but we but, well, we won't know. I mean it's it's it is what it is and. Uh, I think I think the mentally tough and the prudent will make it through very well. Those yeah. who are, you know, it's going to be it's going to be a rough time. How do you think this is going to end? Like as soon as like everything opens again, because I have like oh, a feeling I, that. Um, I think that you know I'm 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 relatively optimistic. I would say realistically optimistic. Uh, as in, as in, I can see both sides, and and I I choose to see and focus on the side that is that appeals to uh, a, a kind of practical altruism, for lack of a better phrase. Basically, I'm I'm kind of trusting and hoping that the machine will work mostly how the machine's supposed to work. And so, what I think is going to happen? I mean, yeah, people. Um, I actually don't think the the whole you know style of lockdown is going to last much longer, because and and I don't think it's going to last much longer. Not because uh, people are going to start getting better, but but at some point one one's got to make an educated, calculated decision and go. You know, is this worth what's coming? 
if we let this keep going, you know, because, because you know, April is going to be cool, but we'll see in May, you know, when, when, when a bunch of people couldn't work for for a full 30 day month period and the system's been taxed with unemployment claims for a full you know for 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 a month it's it's crazy it's crazy here i think you're in a good spot <laughs> you should <laughs> you know and Amer- america's yeah. a different beast you know i was actually in europe when the thing broke out and we came mm-hmm. back we, we made a game time decision and decided to come back to the united states but one thing okay. that Europe, one thing that Europe does is, um, is because their their tax rate is higher and it's a little more of a socialist system. A lot of the people aren't too worried. The government is actually uh, doing what we'd expect the government to kind of do. Um, so they're they're not freaking out. And they, you know, in America, yeah, people people losing it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's, it's getting crazy in Europe because I'm I'm a I'm from Belgium. And my grandmother, she recently slipped, and she popped out her sh- she popped out her shoulder, so she had to go to the hospital. But like m- nobody from my family could go and pick her up, so they, they had to call an ambulance to get her to the hospital. And I, then I'm like, 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 then I'm like, where is this going? Because if you if you implement a tool for everybody who needs medicals, then like how many ambulances do you need? You know? It's like why not why not test people? I don't know. It's just an it's just an idea. It just popped up in my head because like that my grandmother is alone in in a hospital. I know, and you know how older people mostly are. Yeah. So it it. I just you know maybe the herds being thinned out. I have no idea. Uh, I just I'm just really focused on on how I can use the time to continue because because for people like me who work for themselves and generate their own dollars and everything. Um, mm-hmm. Nothing has really changed. Like everyone else around me changed, but my my day to day approach can't change. I have to. It's like when you when when you're like this, you're kind of like a shark. You have to keep swimming, or you die. So I keep swimming every day. I work on my website, or I work on our next project or product. I just try to keep moving because what else? You know, because eventually it'll end or it won't. But but people are still going to spend money and do things, and I got to make sure that. Uh, I have a, li- a livelihood. Yes. Uh, what advice would you give for people who kind of are meeting themselves right now in this crisis? Because I think some people will be like, "Oh, I I don't like this part of my life." Well, you know, if you don't if you don't like any part of your life, you know, I I hope most of us don't have to get to rock bottom. That's that's a very I was very close to that myself. But if you don't like a part of your life and this crisis is revealing that, then your responsibility is to change. You really can't do anything else but change. Uh, if, if you don't, uh, you have no one to blame but yourself. Because because what happens is, is, here's what I think. I think a lot of people work because they don't know or have anything else to do. They, they can't even imagine taking another path. It's always been a very safe, straight, and narrow path for them. And and if and if it works out for you, it works out. If it doesn't, though, uh, for a lot of people, they have lost the thing that was uh, keeping them from facing reality. Hmm. Because as long as you're working, as long as you're going and putting in the on the grind every day, you know, you you can you can forget about the other parts. You can always use that job as kind of the excuse for how things are going or how things are not going for you. Uh, but, but now <laughs> you gotta, you have to kind of face the music. You have to ask yourself, okay, what, what's really important. I, I, we were just, or we were just, um, talking about somebody we had just run into and they were saying that, uh, the, they got furloughed. They were a manager of a pizza shop and they got furloughed and, you know, she was just like, you know, I, I, I guess I can use this time to kind of sort the rest of my life out and figure out. Uh, what it is I want want to do, and so yeah. that's um that's what you really have to do. If you discovered it, if part if you're like holy hell, I don't like my life, and this is a wake up call for that for a lot of people. Mm. Yeah, I agree on that. Uh, maybe for most people, don't, don't get into the the conspiracy theory hole. <laughs> that's a deep one. <laughs> 
you know, people need a conspiracy theory to make sense of it because I mean, it, survivorship bias is is incredible. You know, the the if you the, and that is like the bias where you, if you survive a thing, um, um, then you think that 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 thing is either not as serious or doesn't uh, react to you or, or or won't affect you, right? So. Yeah. Uh, you 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 have a bunch of people who aren't being you know because because really the majority of people aren't getting sick, the ones yeah. that are, uh, kind of are flooding the system and then there's the whole reaction to that. So people have to make sense of that in their brains. They like the brain doesn't like randomness, doesn't like uncertainty, and survivorship bias seems to have amplified this. It's it's like the people in World War II, uh, during the bombings of London. Uh, when 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 a house right next to uh, them got flattened, but they didn't, they're just like, oh, I nothing can hurt me. I'm fine. It's all good. And you just kind of go on with your life, and you start to readjust instead of being cautious about the bombings. And that's I think what we're seeing. The difference is, you know, people bored and got the internet, and they can they can have a they can have a blast. Oh yeah, for sure. Have you have you ever looked into a, some of the series? Because like now, right now on Twitter, is going pretty pretty crazy. Um, you know what? I I looked into some of them, and the thing about it, so here's the thing. This is this is what I'm what I you know blessing curse. I I don't I don't follow hunches. Like I just look at the facts and then try and extrapolate like kind of what the ideas and design would be. And I'm just like, you know, it, it, it's not. I have no idea what is going on. What I do know is when a thing doesn't make sense. Like if you tell me the 5G towers are causing uh, a disease, then I'm going to look at you and I'm going to I'm going to ask you why you think that, and I'm going to sit and listen because I I study physics and a lot of physics is electromagnetic theory and and radio and shit. I'm going to I'm going to hear what you say to me. And mm-hmm. and I'm, but I know what you're going to say, which is going to be some nonsense because you don't even understand uh, how this shit works and why we use radio waves to send information, uh, <laughs> or not radio waves, um, the, the the certain frequencies that we use and what what 5G stands for. It's it's you know I don't I don't I'm not really into the to the conspiracy theory because because I I just get better things to do with my time. I think that's what it comes down to. Uh, mm. If you got, if you ain't got shit to do with your time, a conspiracy theory, theory is great entertainment. That's better than Tiger King yeah. for a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> but I, but I, what, I, like, why, why am I gonna go down that hole? I, I mean, I just got other things to do. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> and you know, okay, when, it's my, when it's my time to go, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna go. So it's not even like, oh, for sure, like it's yeah. gonna save my life. I mean, how, how does? That it is, it's entertainment and distraction. I'm not even saying it's true or not. What I'm saying is, if it is true, what are you gonna do about it, right? And if it's not true, oh, yeah. you wasted a bunch of time. But you wasted a bunch of time in the first place because ain't nothing you could do about it. Yeah, you could yeah. be working. On, you could be working on making sure your life is such that you can do something about it. You know, you can move to the country away from everything. Or protect yourself, or hire good lawyers, or some shit. Nah, you you could be doing that, but nah, you're gonna sit there and feed the flames, man. That's all it is. Yeah, going to random Twitter wars just to kill your time. Yeah, exactly, man. Uh, this is something that I was wondering because you're very active on on Twitter, and you have an opinion. Like, do you ever have to deal with haters? Sure. I mean. Uh, yeah. People, I mean, I would like to think that I put out valuable information, but I'm, I'm a human, and and some of my information, people will disagree because they're human, uh, and people will decide that they hate or dislike it, whatever, you know. And I just, I just look at them and I go, you know, dude, we are like, like we met in person, we would probably get along and sit down, chop it up, and respect one another like humans. I'm not about to let myself degrade the quality of the conversation, the interaction, you know, just because there's a digital barrier between us. You're still a person. I I, I just, I, I can never shake 
the feeling that there's another human uh, on the other side of the line. So I, I never, I never, I try not to feed too much in the haters. Now, where I, where I will let let loose and really, you know, tear into somebody. If you're on my mailing list and you and you act like a fool and start messaging me disrespectful stuff, yeah, we're, we're gonna have a problem because you you had to confirm that you were on my email list and enter. Like like you made a choice to kind of come into my my world. You didn't just have a tweet of mine retweeted across your timeline. Uh, so, but you never take it personal. You just, you just. No, no. Or... Well, I can't take it personally. Most of these people don't even show their face. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I don't, I don't take it personally. You know, but, because like I said, I mean, I, I could meet somebody and they're gonna be the coolest person ever, mm. but they just like to be a, be a dick on the internet. Or I can meet somebody that seems cool online, and I meet them in person, and they're crazy. I, I'm not gonna let. You know, but and this is fortunate being 35 is is I'm a, I'm a true true blue millennial. My childhood and up to high school, the women people weren't doing this shit like this. Skype was like a thing that I don't even think Skype was was invented when I was in high school. Um, but now it's a staple of of um, our our interaction, and there was no social media. There was like Facebook wasn't a thing yet. MySpace wasn't a thing yet. It, these were just things that kind of existed. Or that did, did, did came into existence, like like in my um my late teens, early twenties, certainly after high school. My point is that I'm I'm from I'm born and grew up and developed all my the the bulk of my base social skills in an environment where you had to look somebody in the eye and talk to them, and and it was always about respect for me and, and communication, and and that's just not going to go away. Because we're on the internet, I, I, I can't like I can't do it because because I know that like someone has to type this shit. I mean, I'm just I'm not I'm not I don't I don't want to I don't I don't take any of their vitriol uh, personally when when they when they spit it at me and you know and plus at the, my level of followers most of the time I don't even see it. I mean, you gotta really you gotta really be trying to piss me off, man. Like and then at that point I'll just block you. It's not even because it's not it's not worth my time. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you have a, a pretty stoic mindset. How did you, how did you develop that mindset? Is it like something that came through going to the army and fighting, or? No, no. Um, that that mindset is is really. Um, it's, it's a product of of you know one one part birth. I mean, you got to have the certain. You got to. However, I came out the wound and the genetics. I um. I just. And I'm cooler, man. I have a lower level of neuroticism, man. Things don't bother me uh, that much. And then I got refined growing up where I grew up. I, I'm, I'm, I grew up in a very violent, dangerous neighborhood. And and there was a great benefit to being able to control your temper, not fly off at the handle, kind of kind of move and think um, the right way with people. Uh, so so I really I benefited tremendously. Uh, from that, and then you know, you just keep getting to those two things are already the place is already set. And then I actually discovered stuff, philosophy, and it just resonated with me. So I'm reading it, so I'm like, okay, I have these skills, and this makes sense. And, and I already have this leaning, uh, how can this help me? And then, you know, fighting, you learn to control your emotions as well. Uh, so, so it, it's 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 mostly you know, it's a nature nurture, but I'll say like. In terms of uh, nurture, it's probably like eighty percent nature. I mean, I, I just am really, um, I'm like, like I can if, if I feel myself getting overwhelmed by something, I know how to breathe and calm. And I figured that out before I was taught it formally, how to kind of calm and slow my heart rate and get myself under control. You know, I'm I'm not quite a psychopath. I'm like I'm like I'm like psychopath junior. Like like when things go get a little more intense. I know how to keep myself calm and even and, and control control certain processes. So um it it's more of a it's a more of a perspective than me. It's not a philosophy. But I, I learned about the philosophy after and I was like, oh this just makes sense, you know? <laughs> uh what's your what's your take on hedonism? I think you pronounce it like that. Because he, like there's a oh hedonism. Um, because there's like theory, you have the, the three generation rule from Plato, I think, where the third generation goes into hedonism and then destroys society. Do you think like this 
this generation is more headed towards that path? Um, I think the extremes are being populated. There's a, there's, you know, that's probably not even the best way to explain it. I think that we have, you know, the same percentage-ish of extraordinary people who make a big difference and change the entire world. And we still have the same percentage of average people. And we still have the same percentage of people who are net negative. The problem, or rather, not problem, the the thing that makes it seem like things are worse is that the extraordinary group, by definition, has always been a smaller number, right? How many freaking Einsteins or Newtons or Leibniz or, you know, I'm just, the Richard Feynman's, whatever, right? How many extraordinary people are there? There's so few that we can name them, right? Well, now those extraordinary people end up going to work in Silicon Valley, right? Um, or in the medicine. It's it's easier to you know, and then they're they're making changes, but the average has always been bigger. There's just a lot more people on the planet now, right? So, I don't think anything has fundamentally changed about the distribution, but I think because there's so many, and most of us interact with the average by definition, uh, it, it only seems that way. Um, do I think we're destroying things? I think. I think that we are consuming finite resources probably faster than we can restore them. Uh, that that is a long term problem. We we should probably get to work solving. Probably why COVID nineteen is not that big of a deal to me. I mean, some of us got to go, man. We just got too much shit or too many people, you know. Um, but that that's really the big one. But I, I don't I don't think that. I think one of the things that changes, you know, people make all these predictions uh, based on the way the world was, and they try to predict how the world's going to be. And one of the things, the reason why I take all of what a grain is so, including the, the the fall of Rome and how that's parallel to America, is that they, they didn't have the internet. I, people people don't understand how fundamental the change. Uh, how big of a difference the internet has made on human history. For the, for, like, for the first time, we can send information and currency at the speed of light to anywhere on the planet. That's, that's crazy. And then on top of that, you know, if we do need to move physical goods, you, you know, we have the means to get anywhere on the globe from any point in under 12 hours. It's, the, the world is so fast and so connected that... It, I, I I just don't, you know, someone was talking about how this is going to be worse than the Great Depression. I said, maybe, but we can pull ourselves out of it so fast because I like the Great right. Depression. Uh, we've got we've got the Internet. I don't think the Internet is a catch-all be-all, but, but think about it. Dude, we're talking right now. You know, one of the reasons why they can get, a, get in front of this disease before it kills so many people is they can send information real time from, from a hotspot to another and warn get in front of, track the people who have it, it, it disseminate information, send people direct deposit, uh, unemployment, all that kind of thing. I mean, it could be a lot worse, uh, but we have technology, and that's really important, I think. So, I, I mean, I don't, do, do I think that cycle um, of, you know, the, the, the third generation ruining it, the kind of, you know, hard times create hard men, hard men create good times, good men, you know, uh, good uh, times, weak men, weak men create hard times kind of thing. Uh, sure, I, I believe in that as a, as, a, as, a, as a philosophy, but I think it underestimates uh, how powerful the internet is and kind of changing the course of that. I think I think we can continually stay in this con not continually because everything's got to come to an end. But I'll tell you what, what likely won't end us. War probably won't. Uh, we're, we're too connected, you know. People, people can just you know, I'm, people ain't going to war, man. They want to. We got drones and shit now, and 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 um, and cyber warfare, which is more potent. I mean, if you can if you can hit a country's electric grid, you can do far more damage than storming it with with troops. But we we have weapons that are capable of reaching anywhere on the globe. Well, you know, nuclear war. The 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 cost of going to war is too great. 
too, but you know, but, but what, what's bringing us to what, what's controlling us down? Bugs, diseases can. Uh, we're struck with a with an object from outer space. That'll that'll probably be an issue. But yeah, and, and here's the thing. Here's the thing about the diseases. Our technology is the point. Like, like, like we have a treatment for this thing quickly. Like now it's just getting it out there. The the hydroxychloroquine. You know that, that and that's crazy. Never think about how how many people the Spanish flu killed. You know we figured out a freaking a treatment for it in in under a you know within a month or two. That's yeah. nuts. And then we're gonna have a vaccine in a year. Okay. Yeah. And then mass produced. And then shit, yeah. It'll. I, I'm just not. I'm not. I'm not too worried about the fall of civilization from this. Um, oh no, no, yeah, that won't happen. Um, you said a couple of interesting things. Uh, the first one was the quotes: "Hard times create hard men." Do you think these are hard times? Because I heard people say, "This is like the toughest time of my life," and I was like, "Really?" It's like, I mean, it's not. It's not a pleasant time, but like a hard time. Um. Well, here's the thing. You have to remember something. Uh, a lot... That it's, what is it? It's 2020. That means that there are adults, right? Adults. If I'm doing the math right. I was in the 11th grade. Too. Okay, almost adults. Uh, 18-year-olds, realistically, though, who were not born when 9-11 happened. Put that in perspective, right? Right. So, so yes, this is really... For, for many people, this is likely... The most challenging thing they've they've ever dealt with, because we we've we we've been in this since we we've been in a kind of we'll say post internet society since like two thousand and four, and and we can watch entire movies in our own home and our food can be shipped and brought to our door, uh, all kinds of crazy stuff. And now this has been a dramatic change from the society that they know. The, the, to put the, to, to compare this, right? And remember, I'm a guy who, who, from an absolute standpoint, comes from one of the worst situations you can possibly come in. But I understand that everybody's perspective of their situation is based on what they know in their perspective. If you, if you know, if, if you're 25, right? Uh, that means you probably don't really remember 9/11. You might. Be aware that it happened, but 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 yeah. you you might not have been in school. Uh, but but you're you're a functioning working adult, and then you you're in a whole post internet society and everything. Um, and all of a sudden they're telling you you can't go places. Stock market's crashing. And you, the place you wanted to go and see pictures of Instagram on, it's freaking out. Um, yeah, you know that, that for 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 a lot of people that might be the hardest thing you do. On the other end, you know, if you're born in the hood, this is just you know, yeah, it's nothing nothing really too different there. So yeah. so I'm you know that's the thing like like I've got enough experience in, in life to be like okay, I I I I understand what you're saying. I'm not saying for me, but but if, you know if, if this is all you've known and all of a sudden this flipped on its head, yeah, this is nuts. And, and a lot of these people. Uh, their parents are are you know are suffering too. You know, six point six million unemployment claims. That's insane. Um, and that that's how many filed for unemployment here in the United States last week. That's that's a large number of working people who are not working. Uh, and so they likely have children as well. I know a few people who are working who have kids. So yeah, this is this is probably the hardest thing for many people to deal with. And or have dealt with in their life, and and that's that is not even a knock on the toughness of their life. I mean, if they suddenly wiped your job out and there was nowhere to go, like it's not like you got fired for being an asshole or being incompetent. Uh, a disease came along and said, "Nope." And not only that, they were, where are you gonna go? Uh, well, no one else is hiring. Uh, people are just kind of kind of stuck, man. Mm. Kind of the <laughs> Uh, you also said, like, when it's time to go, it's time to go. Do you think in the West we have, like, um, an unhealthy view on debt? Because, like, here in the in the societies of Thailand, they force us to wear uh, mouth masks right now. But they're, like, older people. We have, like, a, a seasoned vet. He has, like, over, he has 400 fights. And after that, he stopped counting. And he was wow. like, just, ref yeah, he, w he was refusing to wear a mouth mask. He was like, nope, I'm not doing this. And another older lady, she was just 
sitting in a restaurant and she was smoking and she was like, I don't do Corona. Wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, you know, that's crazy. But, but yeah, some people are just like, you know, they're, they're ready. They're, they're not letting it change their life. I mean, that's, that is, that's admirable in one sense. And on the other hand, you know, um, the, the spread of it, people have a really hard time understanding how they fit into this system. Mm. And, and the biggest issue kind of with the, the virus is not that it's going to kill you. It's that it's going to spread. It, 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 the rate of transmission is it's highly contagious, right? Mm. So people don't want to play along. They want to play along, and if they get sick and then the at risk group, that's their own issue. But they're not the only ones uh, at risk. Now they can carry and spread. Uh, so, but but the reason why they're not wearing a mask or they're just like you know I don't care. Uh, I think yeah. I think most people are conned at that point, but I don't think they're at that point because they're not afraid of death. They just don't think it will kill them. <laughs> you know, so uh, well. Uh, but as far as our relationship with death goes, yeah, I, I think we're. I, it's it's another it's another thing that that we are fortunate to live in. You know, even just as far long far as you know, two generations ago, the mortality rate was way higher. Now, man, people live. <sighs> I think the average age is like eighty something. <laughs> you know, um, that's really odd. Most people just don't know someone that died outside of an older person. So they don't have a relationship with death. They don't have a healthy one. It's it's a boogeyman. It's kind of, it's a thing that they're, you know, I think no one wants to die. Um, but, and it, but not only does no one want to die, but, but they look at people who are at risk of dying. And they they can't comprehend that that is going to happen. I think I think that's one of those things that's acquired the older you get, and mm. and until you face it, you know. And I have no idea what the age distribution of the population is, but I do know that that we make we make death into this kind of we we have a weird relationship with it. Um, we're not, we're not really comfortable. Uh, interacting with the dead, we we built the whole mythology kind of around funeral homes and ha- and Halloween and ghosts and hauntings and spirits. Mm-hmm. It gives people a distorted relationship with, with death as well. On top of it being something so scary and, and terrible for most of us to comprehend, mm-hmm. and you tell people, you know, so so people have to think that they're not going to die, you know, to kind of kind of quell that that fear that they have internally but but um i i think I, I think that 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 relationship with death that we have is is probably not a factor in the disease you know until you see someone die from it see someone die from it you know then you probably or know someone then you probably have a different reaction mm-hmm. yeah that's true um, do you think that like not being aware of the fact that you're gonna die is holding a lot of people back in their lives? I think people, th- I th- you know, you know that's that's funny. I, th- I think some people think they have all the time in the world to kind of turn things around, and they're they're not yeah. aware of that they're they or they 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 try they they don't think that the the, the ride's going to end, right? Mm. Uh, you know, with with that said. I think a lot of people just con to give up. Uh, they they go, okay, I'm 30, I made it. What else is there to do now, right? No matter what they've done, they just a lot of people give up. They, you know, what what is the old saying? You know, live like you'll die tomorrow, plan like you'll live forever. And and I think people have it the other way around. They 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 live like they're going to live forever. But and plan like they're gonna die tomorrow, uh, is and they just don't consider the future and how much you can get done, how much you can accomplish, and how much you can change uh, your life with a, with a little bit of um, I don't know, with a, with a little bit of hustle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. It, it's just it's weird how some people. I I'm, I'm at a so I. Uh, 
I'm currently on an island, so I see a lot. Of, it's like people come and go here. It's like people come to the gym and they go. Some people stay longer, but it's like a constant stream of people. And you always have like these people with interesting stories, but like it, it always comes down to this part because I'm one of the people who's there like longer right now. And yeah. at, at one, we always have these conversations where people, they start to like, well, I call it bragging about something which they're very proud of. And it's mostly something where I go like, I mean, it must be fun. But I'm not that impressed by it. But I just listen, and then they look at me, and, and then they. I'll give you the example. There was like at one point, some guys were getting drunk, and they were like bragging about their nudge count. And I was sitting there, and I was like, "Okay, good for you." And then suddenly, after a while, they stopped bragging, and the conversation turned to me because I wasn't really taking a part of it. And they were like, "What do you think about this?" And I was like, "I don't care." And then they went on, and suddenly one of the guys goes like, "Wait, how long are you in Thailand for?" And I was like, "Well." I quit my job at the end of September. And, like, <laughs> and they were like, wait, you're here that's this long? And I was like, yeah. And they were like, how do you do it? And, uh, and I was like, well, you basically told me what you do. I don't do that. You know, I focus on my life. I hustle. And then they go like, oh, you know, it's like a different perspective for them. And it's like, I, I think some people don't realize that if you take away a little bit, I don't say take away all the pleasure of life, but if you take away a little bit of the pleasure, and you stop like chasing the honeypot, then yeah. you can improve your life drastically. Absolutely. You know, people are very much interested in, in this idea of, of feeling good or being happy. And I'm like, yeah. those things are a, a byproduct of progress. And if you focus on progress, you'll probably be happier, right? If you focus yeah. on being happy, you might do things that don't necessarily cause you to make progress and then you you're left wondering why your life is is in shambles you know and it's it's like doing drugs you know you can get the same feeling from doing drugs if you just get out there and hustle and and do work if you if you suffer a little bit you feel better in the long term or you could just just go get high feel better now and and you know you'll never get anything worth having because the drugs they give you the feeling you want it's like it's like when people tell their plans they get all the accolades and feelings of of you know doing something without actually doing it they get people going congratulations and you're so cool and and good luck and all they had to do was just go do it then show up and talk about it mm-hmm. it's funny that you mentioned this what's your uh your vision on um I did have personal experience with it, but um, like psychedelics, like uh, people are are very high on mushrooms and. Like, oh, no, I don't. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure it does wonders. I just I've never been interested. Like. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I guess my thing is like my life is so good, and I'm I'm still trying to pick apart things. Now, I mean, what what, what good is? I'm, I'm very much into like how does this help me enjoy? How, how does this help me get closer to something I want? Right, mm-hmm. and and I don't I don't see how drugs, psychedelics, whatever, help me. I see how they take me away from it, and I, I and and I'm not putting all drugs in the same category. I just personally don't understand or get the fascination with psychedelics. I would I would much rather um, train myself than and and then then just go get an experience. And I really think that's kind of you know one of those things. Where it's it's quick gratification, it, it, honestly. Like I'm sure, I, I'm sure the experience is legit, but but it's it's just an experience. I don't, yeah, I don't, like I don't get it <laughs> personally, you know. Hmm. But that's that's you know where I'm at with that. Yeah, it's funny because well, I call a so in this island I call it sometimes I call it a hippie island. Because you have like communities here. It's like you have the Muay Thai community, you have the yoga community. They have something in between. Not really in between. They're like kind of hippie. I don't know what they're doing. But they're on drugs for sure. They're, they're on drugs for sure. But like ayahuasca is pretty big here. And I know some people who did it. And I know people who did it before. And they're all so high of it. And they're like, oh, it opened so many doors. But then I look at their lives and it's like too much. Right. Like, like, like I've, I've never changed. looked at like yeah, I've never looked. Like no one's ever told me, man, I did this, and then I want to accomplish this later. Like I don't, yeah. I don't see the connection. 
Yeah. Like I'm sure it was a great fun time, but in, but in, but but well, but what do I get out of it? How does this get me close to what I'm trying to grab? You know, out of the, out of the world, and you know, improve the time I have now. And it, and it does. And I'd much rather be working, busting my ass, and 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 really trying to change my thoughts and my mind through some type of discipline, training, or implementation, that kind of thing. Mm. Um. One of, well, that's what they say. One of the benefits of the, the psychedelics is like healing past trauma. Have you ever dealt with uh, something that popped up from the past, which were like, where does this come from? And how did you um, kind of solve it? You know, uh, occasionally, you know, I had an experience a few a few months ago where I was like, where, where I, I just I thought about some things that I went through in my childhood and, and some, you know, the, ne- the neglect and and things like that, and some things I blame my mom for is the, as far as my the the state of my sister's life. And yeah, I, I had I've had that experience. Um, but but the I, I know that I know that the way through the because I've worked through these things, right? I know that the way through a lot of your issues is right through them. You you have to kind of face them. And deal with them, and and take them on, and be ready, and be ready to be something. You know, there, you, you, there, there's no easy way through trauma. I guess is the best yeah. way to put. It. You know, but if you're not, if you're if you're there, and, and you have this, if you have this trauma that you have to face. Uh, there, no, no drug is going to do that work for you. You have to do that. So when you when you when you face something from your childhood or later on, you you decide to write about it. Uh, writing is writing is one of those things that yeah, I mean that's how you you cope and you sort of thoughts out because mm-hmm. if you can take an experience that you've gone through and break it down and then reconstruct it so someone else can learn from it or get something from it without having to experience it directly. Then you're in a you're in a you're in a good position to do some good. I think you're in a good position to to not only do good for someone else, but also help you on to help yourself understand what you went through. Mm. Um, you're you're basically on a a journey of constant self development, if I can say it like that. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. I think that yeah. that sums things up pretty well. How, I think that, how do you? This is something I was wondering. Like, how do you keep a uh, how do you keep a relationship healthy? Because, like, what I notice is like when you're in when you're constantly de- developing. Like, some people they just they just don't develop, and then it's when you like grow apart. <laughs> like, how, or maybe I do it wrong. But like, how do you how do you keep a, your relationship healthy? Um. Well, well, the you know the the old saying, right? Uh, well begun is half done, right? And and if if you operate based on that premise, then a lot of what you have to do before you even get into you have to choose the right person, I guess. If you choose the right person, then they're going to, to grow and develop with you. You know, that is that's a given. The the problem that a lot of people have is that they, they don't do due diligence in selecting someone. They just they just let they just, you know, follow the willy-nilly attraction, I think, instead of really breaking it down and going, okay, is this person a good match for me? Is this person someone that's going to, to grow with me? Do they have the potential for that growth? If you don't have that, if you're not willing to, 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 to do that and, and, more importantly, walk when you don't see it as opposed to just kind of sandbagging and dragging it along, then, mm-hmm. then you set yourself up for trauma you set yourself up for for something that's going to um, not work out well did, did you uh so you kind of had an idea what the ideal relationship would be for you when you uh before you met your current girlfriend um yeah you know the, the, you have it's not so much that you have an idea it's that you you know you can always do well if you if you start with what you don't want right yeah and if you if you move 
from from that. If you go, okay, this is what I don't want, then mm-hmm. then you then you you know you you get rid of a lot of flags. You get rid of a lot of problems from the jump. If you're willing to, I'm not going to settle for that. I'm not going to tolerate that, and and then, and then be willing to leave when when those things pop up. And then what happens is if you if you if you gradually put together this list, and you're not you're not afraid to kind of walk if this person doesn't meet those standards, mm-hmm. then then what's left <laughs> are are only people at the very least who don't have those flags. Now whether they yeah. they meet standards of excellence is another thing entirely. What if you continue to chop down and chop off the people who don't meet any of you, who 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 have the flags, you can go you can go pretty far. And I charge you to do a lot know what you want and end up and stick by it. And I think if you if if, if someone who's gonna grow and move along and then you have to learn what that looks like and then you have to learn to select for it and and that's that's going to be a, a really good experience for a lot of people to to do, but it's hard. It's hard um, because you know, like, like it's hard because we don't want to walk on people. It's hard, hard because we don't want to be alone. It's hard because we you know, we might like a lot of other people, so we let a red flag slide. But no, you have to you have to take that part of your life so seriously if it's important to you. If it's not, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, you just 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 go swipe on Tinder all day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, I forgot my question. Oh damn it! Uh, I'll ask another one first. Uh, you have a this is something that I, that interested me. You had a, a blog post recently. I think it was how to how to have a relationship, if I recall correctly. Um, yeah, something like that. I, I have a few about relationships. Uh, I read it recently, uh, but the thing that 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 interested me the most was like m- most most bloggers they go they write like from an, another perspective than you. Like you write from your own perspective. You say like I have a mission. Yeah. Have this, have that. Well, well, most bloggers go like, oh, don't don't date this girl, don't date that girl. Like how how did you come up with that perspective? experience man uh, <laughs> just you know what what's worked for me and then what and also what I've seen not work for other people I'm, I'm always trying to learn from my own experience plus the other person I don't have enough time I won't live long I mean I survive some of the experiences so I can benefit from the experience and the lesson I would take from it. So, you know, you, you look at what happens, you do things and you see what works and what doesn't together and and I don't my relationship and I don't I don't think it's gonna end anytime soon um, so so I think that that what I have uh, put together works certainly works for me and, and really I'm just writing from my own my own angle you know if someone disagrees they disagree and if they have a great relationship and they disagree you know clearly we can learn from one another. I don't really, you know, get a lot of disagreement because because I'm writing from my perspective and what's true to me. And, and and if and if it's true to you and you're not just writing to match the numbers or put some paper out there, um, you, you, not only will you not really get a lot of disagreement, but when you do, if you do, you'll be in a better position to kind of field the question. And maybe maybe you you put something not quite as clear as it could be stated. Uh, maybe they misunderstood you just, uh, or maybe they're angry because of something they just went through, but everything I write, you know, it comes from what I've experienced. I don't, I don't really know how to write anything else. I don't even think you, you really should. Um, <laughs> if, if you're going to go the whole like blog self-development route, like, like yeah. my, my blog is so powerful because these are my experiences, you know? Um, you did a Q and A Q&A recently on on Instagram. You said something very interesting. It was um, somebody asked if you believed in the law of attraction. Can you can you elaborate on that? Because I I really liked your your view on that. Oh uh, yeah, I, th- I think the law of attraction is you know I think it's mostly bullshit. Uh, mm-hmm. There's just at least you know th- there's law of attraction in physics, but that that is uh, another thing. But but the 
there, there is no magic law. There's no thinking and it'll happen. No, you, you go and do uh, work with an intention behind it. And you move closer to that intention, but because you're working intentionally, you also activate a lot of peripheral kind of occurrences, things that may that that, that you weren't directly looking for, but ultimately you're in a position uh, to benefit from. Like like if your goal was to like m- m- take your income to six figures, well to to get that, uh, you're probably going to have to learn a new skill, work a little harder, and and then learning and a new skill and working a little harder, you're going to catch the the odds and attention of a few other thing people around you, maybe get some other offers, maybe get sent to another place, and because you go to that place, you got to learn this language or whatever, and now you're there, so you got to get a higher income, uh, more responsibility, new skills, and then that opens doors for other things, and you may not know where you're going to go in. And and it sets the tone for you to like meet your wife or something like that. But uh, generally speaking, taking an intentional action towards a positive or towards something you want is is the law of attraction. That that's all there is. But the law of action that's not as sexy, you know. Tell people that that that's that's not what people want to hear. That's why the secret sold so many damn copies because you know there's no secret. just just go do some damn work you know if, if, you, if you go do work you you won't need to ever wonder about that but but now now choosing the right work and and how to apply yourself though that's a different discussion but the general meta idea the strategy do work uh with intention is is all you need I, that's why i don't really bond to the law of attraction and you know maybe it's just got bad marketing the way but, but I'm I'm not thinking of that. It's it's kind of like the the dream believe achieve hype. It's like I, I think they forgot to put in the word work. It's like a lot of people will, it's like oh I'm gonna dream believe achieve and I was like yeah, but you also have to work. It's like you, you have to believe. But you also yeah. Have to work. It's like a lot of people forget that because all these all these motivational speeches on YouTube. They're very popular. Like I've fallen into that trap as well, especially when I started to change my life around. I was relying a lot on motivation rather than just me just, you know. I always did my thing, but I was like, I'm going to just motivational speech. You know? Yeah, yeah, I got, I got that, man. Like, motivational speeches are, you know, they're, they're, they're fun, you know. They're, they make you feel good. But it's a quick, yeah. it just makes you feel good. Like, it's not... You know that that speech. When you're done listening to that speech, you have just wasted ten minutes that you could have put towards uh, doing some kind of work. Yeah, that is that is true too. Do you believe in like I don't know? There is a term for it. I forgot. There's like a, this principle where you say, "I'm gonna achieve this goal by this date." Is that something you did, or did you just? That no, no, I just, I just, I just started taking action. You know, because I, I don't know how. There, there, there are too many things. The way my brain are a lot. Uh, they, they may accelerate the timeline or slow it down. But I know that if I just take action towards things, then, then I'm going to be in a position to, to benefit. Like that. That's all I know. Uh, I don't, I don't really set a date because setting a date. Uh, if it, there there are all kinds of things that can happen, you know. Now, but, but you know, a lot of people need that kind of thing, that kind of deadline, because because they don't they don't know how to work. They need that that something to push them. But if if you can get up every day and do work, you know, that's what being self employed is about. You know, there's no there's no deadline. You know, like I got to always move and always work. I don't so I don't. I've learned that you don't need that. You just need to always be be working, always be doing your best. And if you do that, then things will happen as quickly as they can and no faster. Hmm. Is it like a point in your life where you decided that you wanted to be self-employed or is this something that happened uh, along the way? Um, You know, I always, I just didn't want to be broke is how I started. Mm-hmm. That's why I went back to school for, so I could be more, more employable. But then, I, the, but then I got a taste of freedom and, and the ability to kind of make money wherever I'm at, and I was like, "Oh, this is way better." Uh, and so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna follow this route instead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at, at what age did you 
did you have like your your big breakthrough like around probably what thir- age? 31 well 31 okay. is when I, yeah yeah 31 no, like i haven't been at this thing long at all maybe two two and a half years like really well two or three years like really making money and and really living and 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 generating a large amount of money at that like not not like um like a thousand or two thousand dollars a month like like really living mm. and at, at what age did you start out trying to be self-employed uh, i just always wrote and created content so i guess if you if you want to go by like like being intent there was never really that a level of intentionality behind it per se it was just I'm building this content, this audience, and I always wanted to write books and mm-hmm. stuff. So, so, so I never like sounded like I'm gonna wake up one day and build a business. Like, no, I, I've always wanted to be a writer and have an audience, and 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 that that is at the core of what I do. Mm. What 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 advice would you give to people who say it's like too late? Because it's funny when I started. I got into, well, I started out in MMA, but I was like 23, and people were like, oh, it's way too late. And I was like, already? It's like, I'm 23. And then, due to some politics at my first gym, I had my first fight at 26, and I had to travel like 11,000 kilometers to get it. I basically came to Thailand to have my first wow. fight. Yeah. And, then, and then people were like, oh, it's, now it's too late. You know, you had it, but now, now you have to focus on getting a job. And it's like, what would you say to people that it's too late because to them I'm like age is just a number. I'm I'm 27 right now and I feel better than when I was 16. Um yeah, it's just, I mean there there are very few things where it's too late. Like you know if you're 34 you're probably never gonna make it to the NFL or in the NBA. Like that's probably not gonna happen. But but everything you you could just never too late. You know there, there's just. There's just what can you do? Are you willing to do the work? You know, like if you started today and practice for ten years straight, you probably in, in ten years you could you could be be a professional musician. Uh, if right, so it doesn't matter. Like there are very few things where there's a hard fast age limit, and most of them are sports. Mm. Yeah, well, sports are taxing on the body, especially fighting. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, like. I mean, I think boxing is pretty taxing, but like Muay Thai, oof, because you have the elbows, the knees, the kicks. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I, I see what what you guys go through. I, I would never get getting cracked with an elbow. Nah, man, I'm I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't hurt. Well, I've never been hit with an elbow. They tried, but so far they didn't succeed yet. But <laughs> I had the blown up shin ones. That that hurt like hell. Yikes! Yes, yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, that that was not fun. I I fought three rounds with like a shin that was as big as my my quad, and I kept kicking with it because you have the adrenaline. But after the fight, I sat down and suddenly I got nauseous and I was like, Ugh, full of pain. But it's, it's probably yeah. it's, it's probably the fight that has the most fun, and I was three rounds in excruciating pain. Yeah, that dude, that's uh, yeah, man. Fighting is is hard, man. Fighting is a very hard life. Uh, I'm very happy that that I don't have to do that anymore. I mean, I enjoyed it for what it was, but but I have I have no interest in um, in doing it again. So you wouldn't fight anymore? Uh, no, no, no. I don't. I don't think so. Um, if if for any other reason than the the amount of time and energy it takes to fight, uh, versus what I could be doing with that other that that energy, you know, I'm, I'm never going to. And how far I could go at this point now? No, no, I wouldn't. Not happening. I mean, and I've thought about it long and hard, but uh, and I always come back to the same conclusion, which is, I uh, you know, for the amount of energy and time I'd have to put in. At this point in my life, um, and and then you know, there's this whole, and that, especially now with, with the quarantine, is you know, boy, another year, another bit of time, they they, they, oh, they yeah, goes yeah. by. Mm, yeah, that is true too. Do you think uh, all all men, well, boys, men, whatever you want to call it, should should pick up combat sports, whether it's boxing or Muay Thai or? I, I think that that they should be introduced to the idea certainly um 
at an early age and just see what they they you know and really learn how to defend themselves. It, 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 the, the bigger benefit is that it would give everyone uh, a sense of respect for violence, which I, I think our society is lacking. People don't don't realize how easy it is to hurt someone, and, and then what happens when you do hurt someone. Yeah. So. Um, you're, al- you're also known for, well, they call it being rat pills, if, if you want to call it like that. There are some uh, YouTube talks about that. How did you get introduced to the, the rat pill? I uh, just, just, you know, it's just an idea. Um, you, you, you just keep learning things and, and you get, you get exposed to, to the hardcore truth about life and you can't turn away from it and you just go okay so this is why this happens and then you start using it to your advantage um or or at the very least making sure that you don't fall victim to it and so so and 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 doing so uh it just it just it made sense i mean i don't as far as you know fall into or what made me think about it you know you just i'm always about what makes what's true i mean i i can't i can't deal with um, a falsehood. If I see, if I see the map and the road, and the road it says this way, and the map says that way, I gotta throw that map away. And part of the red pill is just getting the right map. Uh, guys don't have the right map, so they make they make mistakes, and then they're angry as they should be because they were sold a a, a bad bill of goods. And and uh, like most guys, you know, I went through that phase, and but now, you know, it, it's not it's not a problem. Yeah. Did you? Did you get introduced to it by the the books of Rollo Tomasi, like the Rational Mail, or? Oh no, I've been. I mean, I I can't even remember. Um, I was twenty three. I was probably reading Rouge V, maybe. Oh yeah, um, I know that one. Maybe started reading Rouge and then Roycey, and then you know you just get exposed to other guys, and you just read other things, and um. And then eventually, it's just you, you just I, I actually I but yeah I didn't I didn't discover. Uh, Rolo Tomasi until until later. Um, what do you think of his work? Like, I'm a big fan of his work. Uh, I'm a less fan of the, the manosphere in general, but I think he has a lot of interesting ideas. Oh um, no, it's, 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 he's he, they're great books. I mean, they 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 stand on their own, and and they they are they are excellent pieces of work. Hmm. Yeah. Um, do you think that this is this is purely my opinion? But like, although I like the idea of the red pill, I think a lot of people who are in the red pill they're kind of like how do you say this? I would say women haters, but they're kind of resentful to women because of what happens. Do you think that's a, a, a big part of it as well? Um, I, I think like every you know they they call it stages. I mean, there's stages, and you we go through these stages and. Anger is one of those stages, you know. You you've been sold a, a bad bill. Now the whether a guy moves past it or stays there, that's a, a different discussion entirely. But uh, the, the anger is is sensible. I mean that 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 happens to all of us, you know. Uh, they they go okay. This is you know I was following this set up this playbook and now. Uh, this playbook is going on, and it's not—it's not what I was told. It's different, mm. you know. The, yeah. But but that I think that's everybody. Yeah, I mean, if if you the truth can hurt, I went to that phase as well. Where I was like, oh damn it, I, you know, it's like that initial phase where you go like, I, I didn't want to know this. Yeah, you know, or, or rather no, I mean, the, the, that's the denial phase, but but the anger phase is where. Uh, you have, I mean, you've accepted this is this is true, man. This is how things are. Uh, that is the hard phase for a lot of guys. That's the the rough one. What is your uh, your vision on the the men go their own way movement? Oh, um, I, I don't understand it. I, I don't. I don't. I don't know much about it. <laughs> the whole idea okay. is just yeah. It, it, I mean, I, like I, I guess I know what it is. I don't get it. But you know whatever yeah. makes a guy uh, interest, whatever makes a guy happy. I don't know. Yes. Well, I had I had the same. I 
I didn't really look into it. I kind of looked at the generality, and I didn't get it either. I was like, this is just avoiding the problem, if you want to call it like that. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, well, you know what, they, a lot of the guys, they have, I know that they, they've decided that uh, they, they dealt with the problem, and they're just like, you know, it's just not worth it to me, I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna play that game anymore, uh, it's, it's pretty much how a lot of these guys go, and have, have responded. Hmm. You're, I would say you are one of the, I like your, I, your view on a lot of things, I also like your view on the relationships and you had a an interesting blog post about that and one of the the critics well what that's one of the things they say about Roald Tomas is like his books are great yeah these are great but he doesn't really give a, a blueprint on how to live your life after that well you you kind of gave a blueprint on how to keep a relationship healthy what advice would you give to guys before they like kind of get into a relationship and then how to keep on healthy when to when to find a good person oh you you have to always be improving yourself and and never and never you know always be working on yourself um that's that's just always you know before and after and then when you find someone you know make sure you you keep that person alive and never be afraid to walk you never have to you can never be afraid to leave I think that's where a lot of guys get get caught up. You know, if you get those two things down, uh, you should have you 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 won't have any problems. You you'll leave if you do. You know. Mm. Do you think having a purpose as a man kind of helps you along? Um, I mean, it's certainly better than than not having a purpose. But yeah. but I, I think every man kind of he eventually has to find one. I, I think wandering aimlessly is not. Um, conducive to anything constructive in your life you know yeah what advice would you give to people who are looking to find their purpose because if they if people ask me like how do you find it i was like I, I didn't i didn't really find it like i was never looking for it i just found me like finding found me yeah um you gotta try things you know each of us is interested in a few different things and you have to go you know try things i was interested in fighting i walked to fight i was interested in science i was and so i tried physics i was interested in writing so I, I got to work and started a blog i mean you just gotta gotta keep trying and keep adding things and eventually you figure it out i mean there, there, there are so many uh different avenues and, and ways to kind of go but but the best way to find your purpose, your purpose is just to try th things out. That's it. Yeah. Did you did you find your purpose before or after you quit drinking alcohol? Um. Oh, after or way after. Uh, way after. Um. It was just yeah. Way after after because because you know at that point I was I was I wasn't concerned with. Uh, a strong holiday or anything. It was a thing that was taken. It held a place. I was able to fill that with, with more um, useful stuff. Hmm. At what at what point did you realize that you did you want to quit drinking alcohol? Because like I remember when I quit drinking, I was like, and I was in Mallorca funny because it's a party place i stopped drinking in the middle of a club i was like i'm never drinking again like oh. where did you <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, it didn't quite go down like that for me i was i was you know i was i woke up with a hangover and was was in a miserable position and i was like you know i got too much to gain out of life let me let me just throw this away and, and and get focused because right now I don't like I don't have a good relationship with alcohol. I need to control myself. Mm. Have you have you ever touched alcohol ever since, or is it like no, no, I I've, I've been be seven years this December. I have not uh, oh, wow. had a drink. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. yeah, I take I take it very seriously. Yeah. Uh, did did you ever get people who would try to force yeah force you to nah. drink again? Uh, no. You, you know why? One, I, I wouldn't tolerate me. I have friends that'll make like 
innocent jokes. Like they're, they're like because I know how they. You know, it's, it's just because because it's it's a decision that I'm confident in and and, and live towards, and, and, I, and I approach it now from such a point of confidence. It's just part of me. I just know what no one tries that. I mean, and that's the thing. If you're comfortable in your own skin, you know, people don't don't try you on things like that. Mm. Okay, we're almost at uh, at 90 minutes right now. Uh, there's a lot of advice in this podcast. Before we go, uh, what advice would you give to people right now? Oh, you know, just just don't don't give in to fear, man. Just keep working on yourself. This is gonna pass, and you know, either you use it to get better, or you used it, or you, or you didn't. You know, hopefully you used it to get better. Uh, where can people follow you? Like website, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, the best, you know, I am I'm Ed Lattimore everywhere. EdLattimore dot com. My Twitter is Ed Lattimore. My Instagram is Ed Lattimore. So. If you just type that in, you'll be able to find me anywhere. Okay. Anything interesting you want to share before we go? Like a uh, project or? I'm always working on some kind of project, man. I, <laughs> uh, so so just, you know, just, just stop by the site, you know. Uh, I'm yeah. sure there'll be a link to the site in the, in the show notes yes, or something. And so, yeah. It, it'll, yeah, that's all. Uh, no projects, just me. Okay. Thanks a lot for your time, man. Hey, no problem, man. Thank you.